Hi, everyone, and welcome to VMware's Partnership Perspectives podcast. I'm Kathleen Tandy, Vice President of Global Partner and Alliance Marketing at VMware, and I'm pleased to bring you the stories and trends from our VMware partners, executives, and industry analysts. Today, I'm excited to share my recent conversation with Keith Rosmus, Executive Vice President, Client Success of SoftServe. Together, we covered topics around the rapid acceleration of digital transformation, the imperative of delivering client satisfaction, and the importance of nurturing as well as retaining top talent. I'm excited to share the full discussion now. Keith, thanks for joining me today. Kathleen, thank you so much for having me present here with you today and really looking forward to the discussion. So for those who might not be familiar with SoftServe, can you give us a quick overview of your organization, the markets you serve, and and how you work with VMware? Sure. So I like to say we're the industry's best kept secret. SoftServe uh, has been around actually since 1993, and we actually have over 9,100 employees. So it's a pretty big company that you may not have heard of, but we actually started our roots in building software applications for many of our clients. When we started out actually in Europe, just post the uh, fall of the Soviet Union, our founders actually were literally rocket scientists. And when the fall of the Soviet Union happened, they figured, okay, what's the next chapter in our life? And they started developing software. So it's been an incredible you know, journey over the course of the last almost 28 years now, where we've got over 9,100 engineers in over 12 countries where we serve our clients. And we've delivered uh, successfully over 10,000 projects, and we're actually hiring an uh, engineer every hour. And so, yeah, it's been uh, a great ride. Uh, I've been here about four and a half years, and it's been uh, just incredible to see the market shift and the company transform you know, over the course of that period. But we are primarily based in Eastern Europe, where the majority of our engineers are, but the majority of our client base is uh, in the United States. But you know, like I said, we serve clients across uh, 12 different countries. We just opened up offices in Singapore, so we just got into the APAC market. And we're continuously expanding throughout Europe and Middle East, uh, most recently as well, and starting to get some clients down in, in Latin America as well. So it's a lot of fun. That's great. I love your company history rooted in actual rocket scientists that just speaks to a deep core of tech, a deep core of innovation, which I would say is something that we share with VMware. I mean, VMware's roots are also deeply, I don't know about rocket scientists, but definitely deeply rooted in tech. SoftServe represents an entirely new category of partners for us, which is this area of cloud services. You guys don't resell our products. You don't. We don't. You know, yeah, but you are a really, really critical partner for our customers who are all at the forefront of developing their applications, migrating their applications, moving to cloud, using cloud. So what is your business model in terms of, of the clients? Are you focused on writing apps for them or, or what is the way most of your folks work with your clients? We do provide software development services for our clients. And like I said, that's really the core of our DNA. So we actually look at a customer's problem or challenge or vision a little bit differently than say most partners out there because of that software development DNA. So we approach a problem or a project a little differently. And in the sense that um, we really want to understand a client's entire landscape, right? And where they're really trying to take their business need above and beyond maybe even the infrastructure. And so we've got a unique capability where we could bring together a lot of the different core applications and different touch points that may exist even outside of IT, right? They may be business unit applications that have to be addressed or integrated with or basically modernized. And... We always take really a well-rounded, highly developed process when we're looking at solving a, a client's needs. And the beauty of working with such a great partner as VMware in being at the core of touching really the infrastructure, it gives us the ability then, again, to kind of connect all of the dots to re really where that journey begins for the client, sitting at the core foundation of the infrastructure on VMware and then really allowing a client to figure out if they're late to the cloud game, how do they modernize, 
And is that leveraging hybrid cloud approach, right? Is that leveraging their existing VMware infrastructure and wanting to modernize or do they want to start from scratch and take a cloud native approach using Kanzu? And we can help a client really navigate that entire journey and talk about the pros and cons of doing all of the above. Yeah. Looking at, uh, you know, I also understand that SoftServe has certifications or you guys work across all the hyperscalers, Azure, Oracle, Google Cloud, AWS, um, I think just about every cloud that's out there, which is a perfect sweet spot for VMware as we look at a multi-cloud strategy with our customers, right? We want to be able to bring every different option that a customer could want. And I think SoftServe seems perfectly positioned to be able to bring that, as you said, that entire integrated view. You mentioned applications, and I wanted to talk with you about events over the last year, because none of us could have foreseen everything that happened. What we're seeing is it just accelerated the digital transformation of our customers as everyone is looking to rely on applications, new applications to run their business. What have you seen is that both the challenges and the opportunities as we've all worked to navigate the circumstances over the last year? So you're 100% correct, where we've seen incredible acceleration of digitization or engaging in new forward-thinking projects. And that really was accelerated because of COVID. Basically going back right about a year ago when nobody knew how this was going to impact everybody's business, let alone personal lives, there was kind of a pause for about a quarter. And then starting to move really into beginning of uh, Q3 of last year, we saw clients come back just at an amazing pace, a much stronger acceleration of deployment of these projects because pick your industry because each one is different. Some clients had a pivot to change their whole business model. Some clients, you know, because we work a lot in the ISV space as well, found new opportunities to want to um, take advantage of maybe something that was missing in the market or of maybe avoid maybe one of the 800 pound gorillas like in a certain space. And a lot of clients today or prospects are continuing that even as we go into a post hopefully COVID world, but our business is very, thankfully, is very strong because of all this innovation that's taking place. And, you know, frankly, a lot of it is because platforms that they could take advantage of, take your pick right from the VMware portfolio, where clients can leverage their existing infrastructure and tool sets that they know, but bring that to the cloud. And you're right, as far as our alliances with the various hyperscalers really gives clients the ability to focus on maybe you know specific vertical markets based on a hyperscalers you know, maybe focus or leverage a specific feature set from one of the hyperscalers to leverage and uh, we're even seeing a strong adoption now of clients wanting to leverage hybrid cloud just due to a lot of the changes that we're seeing in the landscapes or regulation that's taking place or innovation in verticals that are especially like healthcare where you know, the innovation is actually in a lot of cases ahead of the curve, right? As far as how things are being regulated. And so the beauty of working with VMware, the beauty of working with these hyperscalers is you've got a lot of the soundness and a lot of the ease of what they're used to working with, but in, but being able to leverage that within the cloud environment. But to answer your question, the problem we're having is actually basically it's a supply problem keeping up with demand. Frankly, I think that's one of our big advantages because it goes back to the point you mentioned earlier about you know, where we started like in the university space and, and how we hire employees and recruit employees is very much tied to like an academia background and being able to find talent that's solid that can really enable a client's journey or vision is, is something I think that really helps differentiate us as well in the market. Talking about talent There's recruiting talent these days. There's also retaining talent. I know one of the things that we've experienced at VMware, lots of people who love working with us, but it's just, it's been a, it's been a disruption and everybody's had an opportunity to think a little bit about career choices, location choices, lifestyle change choices. I know for us having to think about how we're taking care of our people and nurturing our talent is is top of mind. What approach are you taking at SoftServe to be able to help? Sounds like you're focusing on recruiting because the demand is outstripping your supply. But what are the things you're doing also to try to keep your top talent? I can imagine they're also in demand from your clients. So we do a lot of really awesome things. And I think these aren't 
outcomes from COVID. These are things that we've been doing since the history of uh, the company started, but just finding ways to enhance them or tweak them. And, and I'll give you an example as far as recruiting or finding new talent. Again, our founders were out of Lviv, Ukraine, you know, which is western part of Ukraine, about 60 miles from the Poland border. And it's a university town, right? I would say, mm. you know, it's analogous to like a Boston, where you've got a great epicenter of multiple universities, a lot of innovation and high tech. And the area where we're at in Ukraine, it's really known for computational, analytical, mathematical, or scientific types of um, skill sets. And because of that, we set up a program where we'll attract young talent, even high school, right? If they, if they show the ability, it's called Soft Serve University. And we actually fund the development of engineers and we form an alliance, right, with various universities uh, to uh, train and develop IT talent. And this is something we do not just for future soft serve employees, we do it for the marketplace. So it's very uh, altruistic in giving back to the community. And it's such a core foundation of the company that we do that in every delivery center that we're in. So as an example, like we're in Kiev, right? We're in Ivano-Frankivsk, we're in Roslov, Poland, we're in Sofia, Bulgaria. And we've got programs like that in all those locations to really develop IT, young IT talent and form a community for soft serve. And then I think one of the key things we do, and this actually is tied to both retention and NPS, is we give our engineers a roadmap to their careers. So they're not stuck, like say, like in, in a rut, like in, in one project or one area, right? It's like, hey, you wanna end up being an architect? Here are the programs and projects you need to work on. Here's the type of certifications you need to do. Here's the additional work you need to do outside of the company. And it makes it very clear then for our associates to achieve their goals because it's, it's very much spelled out for them. And I think a lot of times we analyze everything. Again, it's, you know, you've got engineers like Ukrainian like, you know, mindset where you analyze everything as, as much as possible to make it better. And one of the things that we always see is that when employees don't have a good understanding of the vision or their career path, they get disgruntled, right? It's not about compensation all the time. It's just about doing meaningful work and having a career path that's meaningful to them and, and feeling appreciated. And those are some of the key reasons why we're able to retain our talent and grow a new talent because it's, it's you know, a cool place to, to be. It's a cool place to work. I love Soft Serve University. Didn't know about that. that I, I just love the approach. And by the way, I'm thinking we should connect you with our VMUG. I don't know if you know um, our VMware user group. They are doing a lot to connect with schools and education and be able to help grow talent. And I think there could be some lot of complementary aspects there. Sounds like it. That'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a, a really great approach and something to, to follow up on. So if it sounds like a lot of your talent is in Europe, although your clients are around the world, I'm curious then to soft serve is probably pretty comfortable with a remote work environment, thinking with all of the challenges companies have had over the last year to pivot was SoftServe already set up to work that way? Or did you have any particular challenges that you had to face in terms of managing that global universe of talent for SoftServe? So we did have challenges, I think, just like every company that was used to employees working within the office. As a matter of fact, we've got just absolutely beautiful offices and infrastructure in every major city that we're in. It's really mind blowing. Like you go to like where our headquarters is, like in Ukraine, right? Our mm -hmm. European headquarters, our global headquarters. And it's a city that literally a lot of the infrastructure is built in the 1300s. So it's like going back to a postage stamp, right? Wow. Or, or it is, it is. And it wasn't touched during World War II. So a lot of the buildings are still standing. But then like you go to our offices, you would think you were in the valley. It's just beautiful, world-class infrastructure. And it's the same thing. It's like, you know, our US headquarters is in Austin and knock on wood, we got so lucky to get in the space we got two years ago before Austin started going crazy. But we really invest in our infrastructure to make it appealing, right, for our employees, you know, when they're in the office. But COVID impacted that. So we had to do a shift just like everybody else and pivot to enable our clients to keep running by allowing our employees to work remotely. And so 
we spent a lot of money in enabling our teams to you know, be able to work from home, right? And a lot of uh, modernization and investment, just, you know, in enhancing the networks, making sure we're ensuring proper security protocols. And we continue to do that. And some of the things we also enabled was, you know, kind of like a work from anywhere approach where if employees wanted to work, you know, kind of, you know, like the digital nomad, allowing some of our employees to do that as well. Because uh, as we all know, call it whatever you want, like Zoom fatigue or being stuck at home or whatever, really allowing that right balance of employees to get outside of their home or work in a different location or maybe even closer to their clients, right? It was really was a win-win, you know, for everybody. But I think we're going to probably end up moving to, you know, a hybrid approach. I think just like a lot of companies where if clients demand that we're in the office, we'll be in the office or, you know, obviously it's always great being in a group setting, but if employees want to work from home and they can get their work done, by all means, we, you know, we're going to enable that too. But frankly, it was very good for soft serve because when a lot of our ISV clients that we build product for, they're used to leveraging talent globally. And so working with, you know, maybe a few people locally, but the core team remotely, been there, done that, not a problem. When we're working with a lot of enterprises, right, who are used to, you know, maybe project-based work, it is something that's new or unique to them. And it's always kind of like, yeah, we're not sure about this. But then when we deliver, they're like, oh, you guys are awesome, you know, and we're getting this thing, you know, project done faster. But when COVID hit and everyone was working from remote locations, it was everyone was on par with each other. And so it's like, hey, it doesn't matter. This is great. And a lot of clients are seeing that, hey, you know, this, this model actually works uh, really well for us. So that's actually kind of like a unique, I think, benefit that we were able to experience with clients who weren't necessarily familiar with working with that type of model. Oh, that's great. It's clear, Keith, as you talk, you know, you've mentioned client a lot that the client is at the heart of everything you do. And I do want to, again, mention that we were just blown away to learn that SoftServe's net promoter score is 77 And for those of us who are very aware of how one calculates that, it's virtually impossible to do. So it's just amazing. You lead client success. Clearly, you're doing a great job and (laughs) delivering a lot of client satisfaction. You've talked about talent. You've talked about SoftServe's approach. What really is the magic behind this, this success with your clients? So as a company, we focus on two things. It's about all about client success, making sure that their goals, right, their projects, their vision is accomplished. And that's core mantra. Obviously, with MPS, it's a way we measure our employees, and it's actually a way they get compensated. And then the other thing is what we talked about a little bit earlier was enabling you know, the world's best talent. And so we recruit well, we hire well, we train our associates really well and we let them do really cool projects and that attracts other people right who have the same mindset and we we take a very strong focus of listening to not only our clients but our employees right because you're not going to have a happy client if you don't have happy employees right and so it's it's one and the same and our hr teams do an excellent job of really you know, taking a proactive approach of understanding what our, our company is asking for at every level whether you're an intern or whether you're a senior architect with a, the company that's been here for 20 years and we take a very focused approach on our clients right so as we grow we make sure that the ratio of client touch points stay the same And so that's very critical because then the clients understand that, hey, these guys still care about me. It doesn't matter how big the company is. And it's very important to me that we keep those longstanding, long-term relationships because, you know, we take the approach, we'll work with a client with a couple of people, but our goal is to grow within that client over the course of literally decades. And as we gain more trust and we we gain more experience with the client and become more value to the client, it becomes a win-win for everybody. It's it's kind of funny because I won't mention any of the names of our clients. I figure it's a lot of like very large ISVs. And if you name two or three in your head, we're probably working with two of them or doing work for two of them or some awesome Fortune 500 companies. But when you go to our, our offices, it's not like they're soft serve employees. Their company ABC employees, where they've got the logos, they've got the shirts, they've got all the swag that they'd have for their end user clients that they're working with. And so they really feel part of the company they're working with. And the clients feel the same way. 
So it's really a cool thing to see, like, especially when clients come out to visit and they see that the office literally is set up that way. Like they they feel like they're in their own office and they're like, wow, this is so cool. And they're like, let me send you more stuff, you know? So of course (laughs) everyone loves all the swag. Virtuous circle. Exactly. 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 Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Maybe that's really the answer. It's just, you know, getting swag, more swag. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> we know uh, t-shirts, water bottles, and backpacks. Exactly. Uh, work, with, work with VMware every, every year at VMworld. Absolutely. That's great. I love how you were talking about happy clients equal happy employees. And I'm just uh, really impressed. How you're, and you're balancing both. You're balancing having people feel really connected to soft serve and how you are nurturing and developing their talent, but at the same time, letting them have that deep connection to the clients as well. And clearly it's magic and you guys are making it work. It's really impressive. Yeah, Yeah, we really feel it's like one and the same. Yeah, oh, clearly. Let's shift direction for a second and talk about leadership. Actually, let's start with how would you describe your leadership style and what do you think are the most important qualities of a leader? So I would say my leadership style is, I guess, a couple key things. One, you know, laser focus on what the goals are. And I'm a big believer in, you could do two or three things really well, you can't do five or 10 things, right? You could do those okay. So I really try to focus on what's important. And you could define what's important as a different definition, right? Depending on who you're talking to. And so that's one key thing though. I really want to make sure that the team understands where we're focused so we can execute. And then I'm a big, big believer in low touch points for the team. Go out, do your thing, try innovative things. I'm all about that where, hey, try something new, right? Because if it interests you or if it's going to help the business, great. And if we fail, who cares? It's just some time lost and you learn something. I think that's a way just to keep people's minds engaged and keep them fresh. And who knows, they might have a really unique talent outside of the scope of what they're doing in their current role. And it's a way really to develop associates or or peers in other aspects of the business that they might not know they had a liking for or additional skill set. So those things, and I'd say I'm very selfless. So I always viewed this as my role as a manager. My whole goal is to make your job easier, right? That's really the way I approach it. If I could take distractions away from you or take headaches away from you or help you solve a problem, that's what I'm there for. So I'm hands-on when I need to be, but I will more than be happy to leave you alone so you could get your work done. (laughs) That's great. That's great. So curious over the last year with the unprecedented events, circumstances, challenges we've seen with business, pivoting to remote working, how do you think your leadership style was most tested and what did you learn about yourself most as a leader over the last year? You know, so I think the most interesting thing was my biggest fear was having those touch points with our associates and clients and having to do that remotely. I have to say, I'm really surprised at the positive outcomes and the way people we're innovating and having fun, right? With having Zoom meetings or WebEx meetings or, you know, you know, take your pick or Teams meetings, right? What I found is there was a lot more interaction taking place, right? Because you're not trailing, you're not on the road. I mean, before COVID hit last year, so, you know, like early March, I had flown yeah. almost 50,000 miles already. So, I mean, I am a in the, road In, in the, just the first part of the year. Correct. Oh my gosh. Correct. And I would, yeah, I mean, I would be going to Lviv or our other offices sure. in Ukraine. I'd be going about every, you know, two, three weeks, you know, or so. So this was a big shift. And, and a lot of our management team was used to that and, or vice versa, or, or yeah. you know, delivery leaders that might be coming to see their team in the States, right? And so there's a huge shift for people and you just got used to it. But the biggest thing is, I've got 2,200 delivery people on my team and then a bunch of sales and business development people in the States. Mm -hmm. And the salespeople, right, they're used to being remote for the most part, unless they're like in one of our offices. But for the delivery people, that was a very unique Mm -hmm. and new experience and trying experience for a lot of people. And I've got to say, in a lot of our management, right, this is the first time that they went through a a crisis like this. Mm -hmm global one granted, but a crisis situation. And I got to say, I was really impressed with the way that the team just took the challenge and addressed it and ran through any possible situation that we've all had going through this past crazy year and dealing with it in flying colors. You know, the one thing I was telling all the managers was, look, 
this was like your first crisis that you dealt with as a manager and all the other things that have happened. You literally had at least five years worth of management experience <laughs> bundled up in the, in the last nine, yeah. 10 months, you know, going back right through the end of the year. And it's that saying, right? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. That's right. You know, That's and, right. And, and the team learned a lot. That's great. Yeah. Crash course in all different aspects of pressure testing and management skills. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. Well, given the fact that you've also been able to do that and keep your employees happy, your talent happy, recruit talent and your clients happy, you guys are clearly doing the right things. Yeah. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it's a lot of great work from the team because it's like anything. Yeah. Obviously, COVID impacted everybody very differently. And, and I took it upon myself really to make sure, you know, just asking people, you know, forget about work. Forget, just how are you doing? As simple as it sounds, it means a lot to some people. And I think they found that kind of like a warm, fuzzy feeling that, hey, you know, you're, you're right. This whole thing's bigger than work. If um, we could do some cool things with work, that's great with this. But at the end of the day, it's about, you know, making sure everyone's staying healthy, knock on wood, or taking care of their families and doing the important things, you know, even outside of the scope of work. And that's the other thing I tell people, shut your computer down, get out of here. I don't want to see online, whatever, because people are working way harder and much more yeah. and, and people are getting burned out. Everyone has seen that, right? And, and you really got to be able to take a step back and just take a deep breath. Work's yeah. still going to be there. You know, at the end of the day, everything is about people and it's everything is personal. And I think the circumstances over the last year have created, we've had the biggest shared personal experience. For sure. Uh, you know, as we've all worked together and figured out how do we work through this and how you're, do we right. navigate and manage all this? Yep. Absolutely. Spot on. Yeah. So let's switch and wrap with a, a couple of fun questions. What new app are you using on a phone or mobile device that is the the newest fun thing helping you either with productivity or helping you <laughs> manage continuing to work remotely and in quarantine. So I would say I'm addicted to Flipboard. Ah, right. Yes. So it's like a so it's like yep. a news aggregator, right? And it, it's it's funny because yep, like I'm a you know, fan. I, I'm not a. I love to read, but I'm not a fiction fan. So it's it's nonfiction or news or current events. And so that's right. I, I love, you know, Flipboard is one. And then I also like Duolingo, right? Just mm. a easy way to feel good about myself that I learned a couple new words in a different language. Oh, that's <laughs> you know, great. Each evening. So that's a lot of fun. You know, Cause well, it's I'm gamification. It's a fun, easy way to try to pick up a few phrases or new words in a language. Yeah. And gamification works. It sure does. It, it does. In fact, I was going to actually ask you, um, what's one activity or hobby you've picked up during the pandemic? And, and it sounds like building your language vocabulary. And eh, that's been... That's, I don't, I don't I, you know, like, <laughs> it, you know that, that, that's one thing I do, I, I guess, just to kind of uh, make myself feel good intellectually, right? Trying to do that. But I'll, I'll tell you, the one thing I have picked up is we're at our computers all day. And you just want to like clear your mind. And I bought like a, a junky old Jeep for my kids, right? <laughs> sure. And it, I don't want to insult you know people that restore cars because I won't call it restoration, but I've been tinkering a lot with it. And that's actually been a lot of fun just so I could clear my head and get my hands dirty. And that's actually been cathartic. So it's a nice antidote from sitting looking and talking at a screen all day, being Absolutely. able to do something with your hands. It is. It's fun. Like I said, and then just trying to learn some new skill. And like I said, it's just a way to clear my mind and work with my hands. Yep. Well, that's great. Well, Keith, it's been a delight to speak with you today. I've really enjoyed learning about soft serve, your perspectives on leadership, how you're laser focused on your client success while also nurturing and managing your employees' talent, recruiting them, keeping them, helping them feel like they're both part of SoftServe and your clients and your insights on the technology forces that are that are shaping our customers' futures and restoring the Jeep. Yes, yes. You know, I'm dying we'll, to see a picture. We'll knock on wood on, on, on that one. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds great. All right. Well, Keith, thanks so much. Thank you. I really enjoyed it. And we're back. What a great perspective from Keith. I really enjoyed that conversation and hope you did too. Thank you for joining us today and listening in. To learn more about SoftServe, please visit softserveinc.com. And to connect with Keith, you can find him on LinkedIn. Please subscribe 
follow and review VMware Partnership Perspectives podcast from your streaming platform of choice. For more information on VMware's partner programs, please visit VMware Executive Edge at VMware.com. I'm Kathleen Tandy, and you've been listening to VMware Partnership Perspectives. Thanks for listening.